is, is going to be to receive a presentation from John, uh, the school committee on the modular classroom proposal. And the goal of the meeting tonight is to share this information across the FinCom, allow FinCom and other members here to be able to ask any questions that they have about the proposal. And all of this is in preparation for next Wednesday's financial forum. And at 7.30, the Reading Senior Center will be an open meeting that will include most of the boards in town, uh, sponsored by FinCom. And the purpose of that is to discuss the budget process for the upcoming fiscal year. And then obviously, uh, our activities here on this classroom proposal will be a part of that as well. So tonight's meeting is very much preparatory for those activities. Um, it has been very nice to uh, be receiving some mail recently uh, in terms of people's uh, comments about this and, and the Finance Committee. And what I, I'll just wait for one second, tell somebody that they're going to the wrong place for the meeting. <laughs> It's next week. It's dark. I know we're supposed to be. I feel like I'm the one other here. It was dark, so I thought, okay, I'll get back. Sorry about that. No, it's not your fault. I knew it was here. I just in my mental class. What I thought I would do just for a moment, though, is explain a little bit to everybody what FinCom's role is here in the process. And I received today probably half a dozen or so letters, and since then I've received some others as well. And I kind of have you know, crafted a little bit of response. What I thought I would do is um, kind of read that to everybody so everybody kind of understands what our, our role is here and uh, what we're encouraging everybody to do. So um, thank you for expressing your thoughts on the upcoming discussions about the need for additional classroom space. FinCom's role is to review the fiscal prudence of the desired expenditure. We report our thinking to town meeting and weigh in on all matters involving expenditures and funds. I personally have attended some of the school committee's meetings on this subject. FinCom is meeting as a group this evening at 7.30 at Town Hall to hear from the school department director about their plans. All of our meetings are public and recorded and broadcast by RCTV. FinCom will be holding a larger public meeting called the Financial Forum next Wednesday, January 21st at the Redden Senior Center at 7.30 with the Board of Selectmen, School Committee, and many other town boards and departments to discuss next year's budgets and the school committee's request for a special town meeting to vote on expending funds for this uh, modular activity. I would encourage you to attend the meeting on January 21st to express your thoughts on this topic and the School of Town budgets for fiscal 2016. Also, the selectmen will be voting on holding a special town meeting for February. I would encourage you to share your thoughts with the selectmen and your precinct's town meeting members, as well as attend the special town meeting. The public is invited to attend the town meetings, and after town meeting members have spoken, the moderator asks for input from Reading residents who are at the meeting. Thank you for your involvement. I will share some of the letters that I've been receiving at tonight's meeting. So I just kind of wanted to clarify what our, our role is here. Um, the school department is going to present um, their thoughts on uh, specific needs and a specific proposal, I believe, at this point in terms of how to address it. And then I think tonight's activity is to uh, ask questions, understand what's going on. Um, we'd like to hear from the, the public as well, but understanding our role is more looking at the financial aspects of, of, uh, of this decision, not whether or not the school department should be proposing. With that, let me hand it over to Great. John Barton. Thank you. Um, and I, I am speaking on behalf of the school committee tonight, although I'm, that we do have school committee members here tonight that will, I'm sure, weigh in as well. Uh, and Director of Finance and Operations, uh, Martha Sibro, will be doing pieces of this presentation as well. Um, I do also want to add that um, the data that we have tonight may look a little bit different next week. We are still getting information particularly around the utility costs for modular classrooms because um, I know that's something that the Finance Committee would be interested in is for, for, for operational costs so um, we don't have a specific utility cost tonight um, but we hope by next Wednesday we will have that number we do have uh, plans to be meeting with uh, actually tomorrow we're going to do a walk of the three sites to see where the best locations are of the modular classrooms, we're going to have AI3 join us, town engineer, um, and I believe a couple other town officials will be joining us as well, as well as one of the people that uh, have been involved in the past in construction of modular classrooms. So we hope to have more information uh, by next Wednesday. So I want to say that as a preface to, to what we're going to be presenting to you tonight. Um, so what we're going to be looking at tonight, um, we're going to talk about the space needs, the enrollment, which is, and how we've gotten to the point that we've gotten at at this ju juncture, um, I've done an analysis, which I've included in the memo that I've given you of 
the classroom space that we're going to need over the next five years. And I'll explain how I got to that point. Um, and then Martha's going to talk about cost estimates of the modular classrooms and um, a lease to own option, which we did look into uh, as well. And then certainly we'll take questions throughout the entire uh, presentation. So right now the, the plan, if, um, if, uh, if there is approval next week by the Board of Selectmen, is to have a special town meeting on February 24th. Had conversations with the town manager and the town clerk about um, what that timeline would look like. So, what you see in front of you is is how how we get there. Um, I do want to add that the reason why we've not really talked about modular classrooms or space uh, short-term space needs until recently is because we didn't know our registration numbers until December 19th. That was the date that. Um, families had to submit whether or not they wanted to be in full day kindergarten or half day kindergarten. Um, so we have, you know, and I'll go over the, the details with you, but that's the reason why um, you haven't heard more about this until now. The 22nd, we went to the school committee and we presented this information. We knew, you know, we were going to at that point have the data, um, and then that's when they requested. Uh, to go further with a plan for modular classrooms. Um, they, uh, on, on last Thursday, on the 8th, the school committee voted for um, six modular classrooms, and I'll go into more detail on that in a minute. Uh, we're here tonight for the finance committee, um, and then the financial forum next week, leading up to town meeting on the 23rd. Um, one of the things that's important also to note is that we have to have other contingency plans in place if the modular classrooms do not go through. And so we are having parallel discussions, um, and we will be with the school committee in late January, about a lottery for full-day kindergarten, which will have to happen on the 24th if we do not have town meeting approval on the 23rd. So, um, We've talk, been talking about elementary space needs for a few years now. And just to recap, what is driving this space need are, are a few factors. One is there has been an increase over time uh, in the enrollment of full-day kindergarten over the last, over the last several years. Um, there's also been an increase in special education programs over the last several years in district. The kindergarten enrollment next year at Barrows and Killam for the 2015-16 uh, school year are higher than they've been historically in past years. Um, and I'll go into more detail with that and with some numbers in a minute. We have a smaller size classroom that we've been using uh, for kindergarten at Barrows, which is actually was designed as a music classroom uh, when the building was built in 2005. There is also a need to add a grade one teacher at Joshua Eaton next year. The class sizes currently at kindergarten at Joshua Eaton are 24 and a half. We've already been told that there are up to five students moving in next year from private kindergarten back into the Joshua Eaton district, which will send those numbers even higher. So we're going to have to go from three kindergarten classrooms to four grade one classrooms. We don't have an extra classroom right now. There is a grade one teacher built into the FY16 budget. Um, it is not an additional position, it is a restructured position from other funds. And then um, we've also had a decrease in art and music classrooms at Barrows, Killam, and Joshua Eaton. So, so at Barrows, art and music, are they being done in one classroom? They're doing, being done in the art classroom, correct. So here's a picture of the full-day kindergarten enrollment since 2005 when we um, instituted full-day kindergarten in the district, you can see that we've gone from 32% uh, or uh, 92 students in the 2005-06 school year uh, until la this current year we have 71%, 228 students. Next year, we're in, uh, right now we're projected for 227 students have registered next year for full-day kindergarten. Um, because there are less students enrolled right now, that is actually 77% of next year's kindergarten class. Um, we anticipate that we will be getting several more half-day students enrolling between now and uh, September. 
So taking a look at it a little bit differently, how it's broken down by building, you can see that um, Barrows Elementary is at 78, which is an extremely high number for Barrows. Usually we're in the high 50s, low 60s at Barrows for, uh, for kindergarten. Birch Meadow um, is around 47, which is a little bit low for Birch Meadow. Joshua Eaton is at 54, which is um, slightly low, but still uh, within their range. Killam is, is higher at 74. Um, Wood End is uh, at 43. What The other number that you should be aware of are these numbers down here. This is the census that we receive um, from, the, uh, from the state for uh, students that are of this age range. We use this as a way to, because kindergarten, you can't project kindergarten en enrollment until you actually see the registrations come in. So we use the census as one of the ways that we at least try to gauge where the students are. And you can see that through the census even, it's showing that in the Barrows District and in the uh, Killam District that we had uh, higher numbers than, than normal. The other concerning factor is, is that this number 360 is that, um, and with only 296 that have registered, and then there really is another group of students that we haven't heard from yet, after, even though we've repeatedly made phone calls and sent letters, and um, so that number, this 296 is gonna go up. Um, and I think that's an important point to keep in mind. It's only January, and we have several more months before school opens in September. And historically, these numbers do, do change um, as houses go up for sale and families move in and so a lot of this still is yet to be determined. John, are these numbers proportionally um, what you get every year? Because I'm just blown away with that, um, sent those census numbers, but proportionally is that what you typically see every year about this time of year? This census number is a little high. Um, usually we're seeing in, um, you know, 320, 330, 340. The, the census and the actual are never accurate. Right. Usually the actual is a little bit... That. Like 50 unable to contact seems high to me, but is that typical? Um, you know. It varies. Okay. Yeah, every year is a little bit different. But it's never exact. I, it's always off. And what's a Barrow's growth attribute to you? Um, I just, I think there's a lot of... The um, largest one. Yeah, I don't know. And, and, and you, you, look, you looked in, in past historical, um, we've not seen those numbers, so I'm not sure if this was a, a lot of turnover of homes, at, you know, at, at, during this time, and that's what's caused. I mean, I know there's a little bit more construction on that side of town mm -hmm. with Johnson Woods, and that may be contributing to it, um, but I don't know. So breaking this down, looking at, so what are the, the needs? So if, um, with Barrows, because there are 78 students, that, that is going to result in four classrooms. Um, three full day and, and one half day. Birch Meadow will, will stay with, with three classrooms, two full day and one half day. Um, Joshua Eaton right now, it looks like it'll be an integrated classroom, although the, that will change as well. It's still requiring three, three classrooms, but remember that we're going to need an additional classroom at Joshua Eaton for that grade one. Um, Killam, uh, Killam is going to need three full day and one, one half day, and then Wood End right now will only need two classes. But again, taking a look at that 43, we're right at the cusp of adding a third classroom. Um, if we get more half-day students in that Killam, Killam district, uh, we could be, I mean, I'm sorry, the Wood End district, we, we could be adding another, another classroom. So, we're, so that's really how it's breaking down right now. And in the memo that I gave you, um, we move to the, looks like page four. On the back of page four, I broke down, starting with this year, what the classroom projections are to be for the next five years, um, so that you can see. And basically, what I've done is I've, I've made the historical assumptions that we're going to use, for example, at Joshua Eaton, four classrooms a year, which we have historically. Um, at Killam, we're going to use four classrooms a year per grade. Um, so I, I used historical numbers, I, um, and I accounted for the extra classroom at Barrows that we're going to need um, because of this, this population bubble of incoming kindergarten students. So you can see that starting with the 2014-15 school year, if you look at the far right column, um, 
I, I assumed zeros uh, as a baseline, except for at Barrows, because we are using a much smaller classroom as one of our KBI classrooms. Um, so we're at a negative one in actuality with Barrows. Mm -hmm. Moving to 2015-16, you can see that we are going to need four classrooms for next year. Um, and uh, at, at the different schools. And moving to 2016-17 and beyond, then when we will hit five classrooms, we'll be at 2019-20 with Joshua Eaton. However, I do want to add one more caveat to this, is that currently right now at two of our schools, music is on stage, um, literally and figuratively. <laughs> um, at Killam and at Joshua Eaton, all the music classroom classes uh, well, for the most part, the music classes are on the stage. When lunch is going on, they, they try to move them to a different classroom because it would be pretty disruptive. So this is really the basis of going to a sixth classroom, is it so at Killam and Eaton, those classrooms can be utilized for music classrooms over the next few years, and also to anticipate any bubbles that we're not aware of right now. Because if you go out five years, these students aren't even born yet. So we don't know what the bubble's gonna look like. So if we do have a bubble in those two areas, we do have some flexibility. So that's, that was the re rationale to go to six. Um, for your, so your assumption here is for the art and music is what they are today, which might be being used the same classroom, except for no? No, we did not, this, this only looks at kindergarten. This is not looking okay. at, this is not looking at any other um, space needs with special ed, art, music, or anything like that. Um, you know, and again, this is more of a short-term, short-term meaning, you know, five years solution. You know, we, as you know, we have the working group looking at much more long-term options. So this, this, this will uh, give us some, some breathing room and flexibility for, while the working group is, is doing their work as well. So this is just a summary of what I just outlined over the um, over the five years. So you can see that the net. So some other issues related to space, um, and, and some of this is, is uh, financial. And, and Martha's going to go into this in more detail. If we if we have to go to a lottery uh, for next year, uh, potentially about 80 students are not going to have access to full day kindergarten. And remember. The number of students that have registered for full-day kindergarten next year is identical to this year, one student difference. Um, so the school district will need to conduct a lottery um, sometime during that week, probably the, the, on the Tuesday. Um, the other thing to keep in mind is two things are going to happen if there's a lottery. Some of those 80 students are going to go to private uh, kindergarten for a year but then they're going to come back. So the problem will just get delayed for a year. So if, if we all of a sudden have a, a group of students at Barrows, for example, that leave to go to private kindergarten and they come back in grade one, we're still going to need the extra classroom. It's, it, the problem's not going to go away. You can solve the problem for a year by putting them in half days because you can fit two groups of students in one classroom, but the next year the problem just comes back. Um, you are also, we, you are also in, um, and I think it's in the giant, we already have 25 families that have told us they're not coming next year uh, this, uh, for kindergarten for a variety of reasons, which means they're coming back in grade one as well. Um, so again, that is going to contribute to this grade one issue the, the following year. Um, from a financial standpoint, this is going to have an effect on our kindergarten and our extended day revolving accounts. Martha will go into more detail how uh, that's going to impact the FY16 budget above and beyond what we're already putting as a, as a reduction. Um, so those, those are some of the issues that are going to be interrelated to the, to the space issue. So I'm going to now turn it over to uh, Martha and she's going to talk a little bit more about some potential locations and I mean potential because one of the things that uh, we need to keep in mind is that we, we need to be cognizant of, and we met today with all of the, the town officials, department heads, um, fire police, um, CPD, uh, you know, community planning, uh, recreation, not recreation, uh, conservation. Um, 
you know, to start having preliminary conversations, what are the questions that you need answered um, and where we can place these modular classrooms. So um, these are some potential sites. Um, my guess is, is that what's going to determine it is where we can legally put them. Um, so I'm going to turn over to, to Martha. Yeah, and she's going, I don't keep slowing you down, but it's sure. very good no. test for town meeting. <laughs> no, it's <laughs> good. Um, so I am having a little hard time bridging to, we, it would have to be um, 80 students less if we, did, if we didn't do this and we did the lottery. Because yep. that's like four classrooms, and I'm still, I don't, when the number of students is virtually the same, yep. how do we go from having enough room this year to being four classrooms? It's where they're located. It's truly just It's where they're located yeah. is the issue. And the lack of flexible space. See, yeah, we have no it, flexible it space in our schools. So when you have a population bubble coming through, you don't have that extra classroom you can rely on for that population bubble. So I'll, 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 use, um, I'll use Barrows as an example, because that's a good example. You have, you have two full-size kindergarten classrooms and one smaller music classroom, mm -hmm. okay? So you also have 78 students yeah. that have read 66 one full-day kindergarten. The only way you can put all of those students at Barrows next year is you have one full-day program and you have one of the other full-size classrooms have two half-day sessions, and then you have the smaller room have two half-day sessions, but you can't put any more than, say, 12 students in each session. That's how you can get everyone into that school. So that means that all of those students outside of the 22 for that one full-day classroom that want, so that's 44 students right there that cannot have full-day kindergarten. Right. So you, you do that same, kill them would be the same. You'd have to do something yeah. similar to kill them. Um, you could, uh, and Eaton, Eaton is the same because don't forget with Eaton, we're all going to be have one day, one full day session as well because we need the extra classroom for grade one. Mm -hmm. So all of those students won't have, and it comes out to about 80 students. Now some of those, that's why I said up to 80. Right. Some of those students could go to Birch Meadow. Well that's what I thought, right. So but yeah. what we've heard also loud and clear from parents is it, those students would have to stay at Birch Meadow for their entire elementary oh, years. Oh, is that what you commit if they go They're going to have to, because we can't bring them back, because we won't have the space. <laughs> so, um, and a lot of families want to stay with their neighborhood schools. Um, and the other problem with the Barrows to Birch Meadow move is that those students then, that go to Birch Meadow, would then have to go to Coolidge. Pushing them. Or do we send them back to, to Parker when they become middle school, but then they detach from their friends. So, and that's a, and we've we've had that issue with the other end. Um, so th there's a lot of there's a lot of other factors here that, that you look at. That so right now for the full day K, is everyone going to full day K at their local school or do or um, we do have some movement geographically, mm -hmm. but um, that's to, that's more to balance the class sizes. So we've been able to do it. But not not to this magnitude. We can't. You know, usually it's been a you know a half a dozen students between half day and full day, but we, we, we won't be able to do it with eighty. But that's a great question. Uh, so as John mentioned earlier today, we did have a um, a very productive meeting with uh, department heads across the town. Um, to, uh, to help guide us with their questions and concerns about placement and issues, and that was very, very helpful for us for tomorrow when we do start to do the actual site visits with um, with AI3 and, and other uh, other parties. So for Barrows, um, the op the what looks to be the best option right now is, um, un unfortunately, it's on one of their only uh, play areas, the hard surface behind the school. Um, and, and I know historically that we have had modulars in the district, and, and so I think when we're talking about it with some people, they think, well, can't we just put them where they were? But you know, we've been informed that you know fire codes change and, and um, design and, and code, other codes change, so we really do have to go through this exercise to determine where, where we can um, place them. So that is, we think that's probably the only option at Barrows because um, the site plans provided to us by the town engineer indicate that, that this area over here is, is wetland and conservation area, mm -hmm. and, um, and um, it's probably not a, not a feasible option to, to place it anywhere else. That's 
There are a few more options at Eaton in terms of its footprint, um, and, and obviously there are pros and cons of each of them. Um, I think we're thinking most likely, if, if, if it works, that this is, might be the best location for it. There's an ease of access to the building, and we do think that there are utilities, that to tap into the utilities on that side of the building might be a little bit easier. Um, but we'll discover all this during our, our due diligence with our, our site survey. Killam um, is proving to be the most challenging uh, on where to put them. Uh, and, and we're not entirely certain that we can't put them back in this footprint where they were before, I, I believe. But um, we're going to have to investigate the fire codes on that. And, and Chief Burns has advised us that we probably won't be able to put them there, but um, we still haven't ruled it completely out. Um, if they were to go here at Killam, they would be end-to-end, um, -end, both classrooms, and, and I'll get into that the next slide here. So both, uh, all the classrooms that we're looking at are, are 900 square feet. Um, they're self-contained, they have a bathroom, they have um, you know, sink, they'll be ADA compliant with uh, access and, and whatnot. Um, this slide here has the original proposal that we went to the school committee with, where we were still looking at four, five, or six classroom options. And as uh, Dr. Doherty mentioned earlier, the school committee did vote to um, have us pursue the six option, the six classroom option. So we'd be adding about 5,400 square feet. The, um, the cost per square foot right now that we're looking at is about $121 per square foot. Um, so the estimated cost of the, the five, or excuse me, the six classrooms is about $653,000. Um, we've been told that there are, no, as you all know, there are a number of DPW projects that are going to start in the spring and carry on into the fall. So DPW has advised us that they really wouldn't have any availability to help us with site preparation um, if this were to move forward. So right now we have a rough estimate in there of 25000 per site. Um, uh, that Obviously that number could change once we get a little more information from AI3 and some uh, scope of uh, costs. In that, that's in the the 653 number. No, it's, the, ne it's the next down, oh, down okay. one. Yep. Gotcha. Okay. Um, the next cost that we um, that we have estimated right now is uh, is 35,000 for architectural services, and um, that might be a little bit high. We're hoping that's a little bit high because AI3 uh, has done a lot of work with us on other options for our early childhood. So certainly they have a lot of knowledge about our districts and about these particular three properties. So we're hoping that that's a high estimate. Um, again, we'll know better once uh, once they have their representatives out here tomorrow. We can talk more with them. Um, the last estimate that I have um, is the actual furniture and fixtures and equipment for the classroom. So buying the the tables for the kiddos and the whiteboards and uh, other other equipment for the the actual structures. Um, and that we're estimating right now at about twenty five thousand per classroom. Um, so we. On the, the six classroom option, um, which would add about 5,400 square feet, a subtotal of 913,000, I put in a 5% contingency for right now, just as a placeholder, um, which brings the total to about $960,000. Well, one of the variables that's going to either keep this around this cost or, or make it a little bit higher is going to be where we can locate the, the modules and the location to the utilities. Um, that's gonna be one of the bigger costs when it's look, when you're looking at your site prep work. So for example, with Barrows, the utilities, it, it's it's water and sewer that's the biggest I issue it, with in connecting in the, the water and sewer are in the front of the building and where the module is on the back of the building. So if there's some way we can connect it underneath at a, at a less costly rate, that, you know, that'll be fine. But, so that's gonna be the, the determining factor. These are brand new units. These are brand, brand new. new. What were, yeah. Okay. Was, that, was any option explored for? We actually did. Um, uh, Sutton, uh, you're all familiar with the town of Sutton, they are actually using 12 modulars as their, is it their middle school or their high school? Uh, right high now? school. Their high school as they're constructing a new high school. And right. all 12 are going to be put up to bid. But the timing of when they're going to do their bid, we don't know if it's going to meet with our time frame because their high school construction and opening day seems to be delayed a little bit. So okay. it, it, um, it, it initially we thought it was a great option for us. Mm -hmm. and, um, and I haven't seen any others that are available. 
Um, and one of the questions that was posed to us at our, our school committee meeting was to look into the potential resale value of these five years out. Yeah, and and so I have I have started to, to look to try and find that out and we'll 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 try and get that number available as well. Martha, before we move on, on mm -hmm. the purchase cost for the units. Um, I think I remember there was a discussion that there's already a bid system in place so that these numbers are, are fairly close. There is. So um, there's two options. Because uh, this is actually a purchase of a good, it falls under Chapter 30B, um, and, and because we're not going to combine this with site work and, and make it a 149 construction project. So we're separating it. So it's a 30B. Um, the vendor that we've been working with and has been helping and provide some figures for us is on a, a bid list called the TCPN, I think is the name of it, and they do um, abide by Chapter 30B. They, they bid out across the country and we're Region 4 for them and they, they meet all the requirements. So we could buy off their list. So these, these numbers are fairly close. Um, there is another vendor that we've been speaking with who's on a different, different national bid list and we're looking to see if he complies with uh, Mass General Law. And if he does, then we do have a couple options. But their pricing is very similar. So it's it's not dramatically different. And that's the reason for holding a, a very small contingency because mm -hmm. it's not so much related to the purchase price, but more the more the, other stuff the site price. Yes. Yeah. 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 Martha, if I can, yeah. Mark, if I can, have, we will stay on top of that sudden situation. And if it does become available, then that's certainly an avenue that we would want to pursue. Sure. Right. Sure. Save some money. Down. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, the the <coughs> next slide is we wanted to talk about the cost to lease to own instead, and um, so on this one, the um, the fixed cost, the site work, all that stuff stays the same. It, it effectively becomes oh, and I didn't, uh, it's about four thousand I think four thousand per square foot, not per square foot. Um, it, it's it's not considerably more. I'm going to say the, the next slide has the difference between the purchase versus the lease to own. Your year one costs are going to include all your other sunk costs, your site work, your architectural services. Um, your, your difference, your incremental cost of leasing versus purchasing is about 51000 on the four, but we're talking about the six. So about $77,000 is your difference in cost if you were to purchase versus lease. So that's your cost of capital, your cost of financing. Does it still go against capital? Mm -hmm. That's a good question. I don't want to answer it. I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> we would have to buy them, but the purchase price was a dollar. Okay. <laughs> so, so is there a lease to not own? So it's more similar to a car lease. Um, I didn't so, pursue that option, no. And then you'd have to figure out what the value is for it. Like for Sutton, for example, right? What the, right. What's the value is at the end of the. Yeah, but they essentially who are leasing would be calculating that. Yeah. They'd be yeah. telling us. Yeah. Right, figure out if it's a good lease buy. I just wonder if it might be an option. If, if the plan is that at the end of five years we'll have other long term options in place, mm -hmm. and we would have to think about reselling. Reselling. I mean, basically, the same the reason you lease a car. Yeah. You don't want it after the end of the lease term, mm -hmm. typically. I just sure wouldn't want to. Um, so we wanted to talk about some of the other estimated costs that we've done over the last uh, last week or so. Um, you know, as we spoke earlier, the the cost or the we do generate revenue from our full day tuition payments, which obviously it offsets uh, our our operating budget, but the revenue that we generate is to cover the cost of that extra half a day, which we use those funds to offset our um, our salary lines. If we were to reduce the number of students that participate in full day K or by 80 students, that $4,200 tuition equates to uh, $336,000 of, of revenue that's not going to hit our revolving fund. As you know, it's not a dollar for dollar cost that goes into that 4200 It's a percentage of the teacher's time and the nurse's time. That's how we calculate that $4,200 tuition. So not all the expenses associated with that half day of kindergarten go away. Um, so we would reduce the number of full-time teachers and the number of full-time pairs if, if we have to go with uh, more half-day options. So that 336000 would be offset by about 33000 So the net impact to our revolving fund would be 202000 
And as you know, we had a 2.5% budget this year, which the rec school committee, um, the superintendent's recommended budget to the school committee is within those guidelines. And we relied heavily on our offsets. for our, We increased our offset from revolving fund for the full day kindergarten by 170000 We would either need to cut another $200,000 out of our budget or increase the offset by another 200000 to to bridge that gap. So. Question. Um, it doesn't cover, that tuition doesn't cover the added costs associated with running this program, and, and we can't make it do a better job of covering that one? I missed that it, No, it, it does cover, the, there are, to calculate what the tuition is, you include other, you allocate other costs to it that don't go away if that full day kindergarten goes away. A percentage of the, the principal's time, a percentage of the nurse, a percentage of the custodian, all those things factor into that $4,200 tuition cost. So the 4200 tuition goes away, but we don't lose a percentage oh, of the principal. We don't lose, yeah. I was wondering about the uh, the amount for the annual tuition. Did I hear you say that doesn't cover? It covers all of the other half day. It covers the other half, half, of the day. half day. But but the difference between the two is the. Well, well, when you take it away, those other those other pieces don't necessarily go away with it. You can't cut. The principal. You can't cut a piece right. of the principal. So you can't the cut a nurse. piece of the nurse. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, the estimated impact, uh, as you know, we have an extended day program that offers uh, care before and after school for our student population, and it operates at all five of our elementary schools. Um, approximately 22% of the full day kindergartners participate in extended day in one of their options. So you can. It's a, it's almost a cafeteria style. You can do one day a week, you can do five days a week, you can do before school, you can do after school. So approximately 22% of our full day kindergartners are enrolled in some sort, sort of program with extended day. Um, revenue is a direct result of what program that child is enrolled in. Of the 22%, uh, our director of full day, of extended day, excuse me, uh, calculated that the revenue that that 22% is about 30% of her revenue. So they're there more than, you know, they're there five days a week or five afternoons a week or five mornings a week. So they're generating a significant portion of her revenue. So if we were to lose 80 students, 22% um, of that enrollment would be about 18 student impact to her program. Um, I mean, I just used the five year average of the kindergarten mm -hmm. revenue. Um, it, it equates to about $37,000, which would be an impact to her. I didn't have an opportunity to calculate if there are any offsets to that, because certainly her staffing needs would change. But again, it's not a, it's, it's, it wouldn't be, she wouldn't be able to offset the entire $37,000. It would be an impact to her, uh, her program as well. Um, right now, uh, our operational expenses, we're still working on estimates on that. Um, we're still trying to uh, identify some other things on, um, to quantify the kilowatt hours. Uh, we're also not quite sure if it's going to have to be electrical energy or if there is a way to tap into gas. Um, so we're we just we're, we're a few days away from having these numbers tightened mm -hmm. up for you all to to see. Um, is AI three? Are they helpful in that arena? Uh, this is. We're gonna, we're gonna ask. Or yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But I've also we've also been reaching out to other um, other communities that have them in place just to kind of get a awesome. kind of a litmus test if if you know the calculations that were are in the right neighborhood because if it is electrical uh, energy then then it is going to be a little bit more expensive than, than natural gas but we're just we want to make sure that it, it's reasonable. May mentioned Sutton was using them. Are, are there many others, and not from a timing perspective? But you know, can we buy used? To your mm -hmm. point, but are there enough, or are there any others that we know of that are using modular classrooms that are new enough that they would be useful? I, I'm sure these modulars look a whole lot different than the last time we had modulars. Yeah. So we yes. talked about modulars, but yeah. different. so along with that, the costs associated with them are going to be very different. So. I mean, yeah. Are there enough people to reach out to? To we've been talking get? with. Uh, we've been speaking with Sutton. We've also been speaking with Newton. Newton has a number okay. of them in place. Um, North yeah. Andover is one that we've been talking to, but they designed theirs a little bit different than what our approach is. North Andover was a, a, a 
construction project. It was a permanent construction of modular buildings. So mm -hmm. they're on job, foundations so. for an early, yeah. I think they have six of them. If you drive down 125, you'll mm -hmm. see them. They're right in front. And when I reached out to Jim Neely, their um, assistant superintendent of finance today, he's like, he goes, we tied them into the building. So, and it was so many years ago, he doesn't know what the incremental electricity is on, on running them at this point. So, um, but to your point, we have been reaching out to other communities and, and one of the um, uh, department heads that was with us today thought that she heard that Lexington was doing them as well. So I've reached out to Lexington as well to see. And even just today on my listserv, uh, Reboth, Dighton, 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 Rehoboth. Dighton Rehoboth is put out on their list there that they're looking to buy too. So it's, it's, it's definitely um, uh, an option. Yeah, and, they're, and they're all buying from the same vendors? Like they're, they're, very, they're limited vendors and, and um, so on the list there today uh, another person got back to me and the, one, the vendor that he recommended was one that we're talking to. Okay. So that's good. He said that he put them in when he was in uh, Winchester and Saugus, so I'm going to reach out to both of them tomorrow as well. Um, these are just—I mean, this is this is marketing material. I don't know that they're going to look like this or not. <laughs> the, the thing is, is once you're inside of them, you do not know that you're in a modular classroom. They—they yeah. they, they look remarkably like a classroom in, for, in the inside. You don't know that we don't need them after five years, right? But you're just projecting that far. I only went out five yeah. years. Okay. So yeah. Right, I mean, there's no assumption yeah. that poop we get to send them back or resell. You may need them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. Okay. no. And, and I mean, the last time we had modules, we had them around for a long time, more than five years. So. Yeah. So, you know, just to summarize. Um, you know the the six module classrooms. The estimated cost, and again, a lot of this is going to depend on location to utilities and site prep work. It's going to be somewhere between nine hundred fifty thousand, one point two million, um, and the annual operating cost. Um, we're still researching. I do want to I do want to emphasize something Martha was talking about when she was talking about the operating costs. Is that um, this is not we're not going to be adding six new teachers because we have six module classrooms. Um, the one at Joshua Eaton, for example, we are restructuring a position next year to get the extra classroom for Joshua Eaton. And the other position, the other ones, where we're going to be moving around existing staff to go into these classrooms. Um, so this is not an addition of positions. I, I want to make that very clear. Um, the the operating cost, the the additional operating cost, can be primarily utilities. Um, you know and. You know, just to, to reemphasize, if we don't secure these classrooms for next year, um, we will need to conduct the lottery. Um, it is going to have, uh, it's going to be an impact on our revolving accounts, which will have an impact on our operating budget. Um, and then if we don't do it next year, we are going to need to do them in 2016-17. Yeah, if we, if we don't do them next year, right, we go to a lottery, they all come back for 16. What if we don't do them then? Bigger class size. Yeah, the class sizes bigger have ones. to they have to go up. Yeah. yeah, they have to go up. Um, so, John, when um, what is the impact of this on the notion of free full day kindergarten for all kids, and then that one year between uh, when we say that and don't don't get the reimbursement, then when we start? So um, we're not we do not qualify anymore. For the two, for the chapter seventy reimbursement on full day kindergarten. Any more meaning now uh, or? Uh, we did or? a few years ago. Oh, in general, it's and, but we don't qualify anymore because our community's property value mm -hmm. actually is higher than the increase in property value is higher than the state average increase over the last what? couple of years. And is that is this that's new? different this than new? what we've been talking about? We talked about, about, yeah, we talked about uh, this six, six months ago, right? Couple, or I might miss that. We talked about yeah. the school yeah. premium. Um, okay, so this is new. This is now. recent, yes. Okay. So so back when um, mm -hmm. Ms. Delight did do the calculation and reached out to, to confirm it with uh, DESE, there was an expectation that we would get about a million, million point one yep. additional right. in, yep. in Chapter 70. Since that, that analysis was done, um, the... Um, Property, the equated property value for the town has risen at a much faster pace than the state average, and the um, per capita income has also risen at a much higher rate than the state average. And those two factors combined 
um, and it was a phrase that I didn't like when I heard it, was um, your ability to pay is, is increased and now you're deemed overfunded. So they're not going to take more money away from us, which, but we're certainly not going to get more. Which is why 70. for the last two years we've seen minimal increases in Chapter 7 funding. Mm -hmm. We received the $25 per student. student. Mark, um, be more direct. Three full day kindergarten is not uh, a yeah. priority yeah. right now. But is it, you know, as you can see from the numbers, there is a demand for tuition based full day kindergarten, yeah. which is still important because of the, the need is there. Right. Yeah. So we've yeah, I think it's a better set than the time we we, I mean, we've talked in the school space community, this has come up already, but is the fact, that new fact, let's call it, that we're not going to get money for it, isn't that going to change the tuition numbers? Like, do people understand that there's going to be, a, if they want to do full day, there's going to be a larger tuition dot number for them? We, therefore, they're going to say, you know what, I'll stick with half day. Why would there be a larger tuition? Because uh, I'm saying in the, in the second year, you wouldn't have as many students coming, right? Because potentially, because of the cost, would be more, right? That wouldn't be the case. Um, well, if you, I, if I, you I, use free full day, I or not, let's not I call free, but yeah, it's I a don't, funded don't really full day kindergarten, there wouldn't be a cost to. There would be a tuition cost. Now there will be. Yeah, I don't know the answer to this. It's okay. Never been free though. No, no, and that's why I changed the term. Right, right the number of people book. who signed up. Free would be okay. would be less. I don't know. Maybe not. We we haven't done that analysis to. Okay. I mean, what the, yeah, I don't believe it's like would it affect, I'm saying would it affect these numbers and then you would have less information. I don't, I don't okay. think so. They haven't been, they are not expecting right now, the, the people who signed up for full day kindergarten are not expecting it to be okay. Oh, no, no, we made it very clear that tuition is 4200. Yeah, no, no, no. No, I think it's every one a year or two out that's hoping to right. right. yeah. 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 And, and yeah. so the expectation would be that you know, if we could accommodate everyone that wants full day K, uh, everyone that could afford to pay for it would, and then there'd be some exceptions made on a needs uh, driven basis. Yes, there are there are some financial exceptions based on um, free and reduced lunch free and reduced lunch call. But if you had eighty more, some of that eighty would, would roll in as tuition. Yes, if we were accommodating everybody. Yes, and, yes. And not just for this year, but in future years as yes. well. Yes. Um, this is, I, I'm not sure this was clear, and I just wanted to add it because it's a concern that I have. Should we have to modular classrooms? When you say there'll be a lottery, it won't actually be district wide. It'll be at certain schools. The situation at Barrows is completely, almost entirely driven by a population bubble that we can't accommodate. There isn't an extra classroom. So when we say there'll be a lottery, There'll be a lottery at some schools, but not at others. Mm -hmm. And I think right. that is, um, a, from a community perspective, that's really problematic. Mm -hmm. So I'll just add that in to the discussion. Because mm -hmm. in the, in the, just to add that, in the past, the lottery was district wide. Mm -hmm. um, no, I think it depended on at the school. If there was, if, depending on the popularity of the program at the school. That was years ago. Oh, we haven't had lottery since. Oh, 2008, I think. So this bubble is playing, you're playing out being a one year thing because I see it kind of flowing through. That's the Barrows bubble. Okay. You know, again, census is very difficult. Yeah. I mean, I have census numbers, but a lot of families, and correct me if I'm wrong, I mean, you would know this, but a lot of families move into Reading when their children are three and four years old. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's, it's very difficult right now to predict what future yeah. numbers are going to look like. How mobile are these modular classrooms? Could we relocate them between schools as necessary? Yeah, we have um, the modules that used to exist here mm -hmm. were moved around several times. Okay. Okay. <laughs> the, the problem is, is the more you move modules, the more you lose the structural integrity. So you sure. don't want to move them around too many times. Sure. And you would incur site costs, mm -hmm. site preparation right. costs again, and, and perhaps with some architectural services and mm -hmm. things like that. I guess, uh, that, was, that was one question that I had. Let's, let's assume it is a five-year plan and they're going in five years. What's the cost to remove? Like, are we going to incur the same costs to put them in that we will to get rid of them? Like, is that, you know, is there $100,000 of cost to get rid of them at the end of the day? Offset something by, hopefully, by the sale of them, but are we, is that an, another cost that's in there that we haven't talked about? Um, it depends if we're selling them or if we're right. salvaging 
Right. What is the, the cost difference of making them more permanent versus as proposed here? More similar to the, the from the end over kind of I, I think it would be, uh, you know, we talked a little bit about today whether we're pouring a foundation or whether we're using concrete pyre, uh, pyres, pylons. Um, so that would be part of the site preparation. So what, what, whether we decide to make them more permanent, what type of foundation we determine to put them on. Any idea of cost magnitude of, uh, of that kind of change? That's what an architect would help yeah. us with. Okay. That, I That's why that cost that. range is yeah. a few hundred thousand dollars. And that doesn't change the bidding process, you'd say. Like a more permanent The site structure. prep work, you do have to go out to bid. Okay, the just construction so. of the module, you do not. Okay. It's, that's why we, it needs to be separated. Do you think the school committee is supporting six classrooms versus the four? They, the did, they did vote yeah, up to the support right six. To I think to, if you're going to go out, you do the six. I think that's definitely the Yeah, because right the six will direction. get us... Right. We'll get us five years. And it makes no sense plus. to ask to go to the well. Yeah, that was the that, that, so that was, that was a good thing. No, I, not I come back in a year. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Is six enough? I mean, I know by the pure math it appears to be with us <laughs> shifting, but. I, 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 that's why I did the analysis of five years out. Yep. I mean, the only thing that would skew these results is if we got this huge population sure. explosion at one school that would not, you know, which we don't know. Um, I don't know that we physically fit. Yeah, and that's the other problem. Is I don't know if we can go more than six. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. In our sites. Other <laughs> questions or comments from the public? Ask a question or make a comment? Yeah, our focus is more kind of the financial aspect of it, but we appreciate your coming and if you have specific questions or comments, please. Yeah, like, <clears throat> I'm sorry, I was just going to say, the only thing I was I was going to add is something that I feel is, is, doesn't really need to be said, but having just moved here two years ago, you know, my husband and I specifically picked the town of Reading for the schools, you know, in addition to liking the town a lot, you know, so we were part of that driving up the home prices, you know, driving all, everything up. But, you know, that's what you, I, again, this goes without saying, that's what you want in a town because, you know, you bring in more money, you support the town, the town is better. So I think when you, when the solution is not in place and, you know, kids are not getting full day, for, for us, it's not an option at all to have half day daycare. It's just, she would have to go to private kindergarten next year. You can't do it. Um, you know, when you're losing, when people, word gets out, you know, that this is becoming an off, uh, a difficulty, you know, then people are less likely to move here and, you know, it's, it's you're hurting the town significantly when you're not investing as much as you can in the school. So, I feel like it goes without saying, but I said it anyway. Thank you, Diane. One other uh, favor, if you could just tell us your name and address, just for kind of the purposes of going who's here. I'm Rebecca Ward and I live over on Kingston Street. Um, I live in Snow Dogs, sorry, I'm on the school committee. Um, I just wanted to share that when I was part of the discussion with the school committee, one of my concerns was that I had stuck in my head the portables that we had at Killam for way too long. And so one of the questions I had was, what's the difference between the portables that I knew and the modulars that I didn't yet know? And so I did travel out to North Andover. They were wonderful out there. And I got a tour of both the modular building, or the childhood center that they have that they actually expect to last a very long, 50 to 60 years, different animal. But I went also to their middle school, um, the Kittridge School, and they have more similar to what we would have in terms of the modular classrooms, except those are attached to the building and ours would not be because of the code issues and the prices that it would take to update all of our, our buildings. But I have to say that I was much relieved um, seeing what we're talking about, their apples and oranges, compared to what I thought the, modular, the portables used to be and what the modulars are now. And so if someone else has, I know some people on this committee also lived through that, so I just wanted to share um, that I actually went out and visited them, and they are different, um, different animals. So I felt much better about my vote. Yes, 
to have the modulars. Climate control tends to be better. Do they have air conditioning? Yeah, they, they have air conditioning. Which actually would help with summer program as well. Yeah. Oh, that's a good point. Um, I just want to, you just reminded me of something, Linda. Um, at Eaton and at Killam, we could not connect them to the actual school. It would trigger additional costs to the building for a fire sprinkler which we don't have fully sprinkled buildings at Killam and Eaton, so you would have to put in fully sprinkled buildings, which is, would be an additional cost. So just keep, that, that's something to keep in mind why they're not connected to the building. Cover the arrows, you, I think you could probably connect it to the building. I don't know if that would kick that in. But it, it I know, right, right. Then do you have to create covered walkways? Covered walkways? Like, would you, yeah, I mean. I mean no, 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 they, yeah. they're not going to, they're not going to be that close. No. No, students will have to walk from, from the modular into the building, it wouldn't be a covered walkway. You can't because it's your you need fire access and police access. I'm sorry. Nancy, Dr. I have a question. What's the financial ramification if we're not able to charge tuition? Because I do know in three states there are lawsuits um, regarding that. Some have been settled about um, lawsuits saying it's a you know not be charged tuition for uh, kindergarten. And if you have a drop that, what impact does that leave for the budget? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's significant. It's, um, right now, it would be $850,000 a year reduction to our budget. Um, I'm Reverend Nichols, 341 West Street. Um, Original Boston guy, who, who, my wife and I moved up here in the three that was born four years ago. So she she's she's Reading. I've become a Reading guy. Um, and I know, especially in, you know, in this financial climate, but I think it's also looking at investment in the future. She's she's the future, and also as an educator, I know uh, things can be tough. I, I work in higher education. But I do see, you know, this is something that we're investing in in, in the town of Reading for our future. So, you know, if you can find a way to make this work, because like um, something you said, we go to private, they come back, and we're going to have the same issue. So, I just, I'd like to just add that I think you know, meeting the school space needs really should be a, a financial priority of the town because it, it means providing for the best quality education for kids, providing for robust, robust arts education, um, and for special education. I know that you know, this, this is looking specific at the full day kindergarten needs, but it seems like um, from the last town meeting on this issue that the space needs are, are significant and are really um, the, our capacity to provide quality education to kids in Reading is really dependent on space needs, so I think we should make sure as a finance committee that we're um, committed to, to, to financing um, meeting those needs. Are there comments from the committee? Um, we'll one more over just just had a very quick question, Mike Fitzgerald, Scotland Road. Um, just out of, out of curiosity, what, assuming this makes its town meeting is approved, what would be the final cost to the taxpayers? Do you have a sense of what that would be? Nothing extra. Nothing extra. Okay. Like we'll be funded from existing sure. funds. Yeah. Okay. Um, which is a great segue to the point yeah. I was going to make. Are we going to this? No, not so much that specifically, but just thinking about town priorities in general and kind of where we are. Um, so, you know, the town is, given how we spend, we're in reasonably good situations right now. At the highest possible bond rating, which is great, so that means our borrowing costs are going to be as low as possible. Um, we do have some reserves, um, but what we always find, certainly in my, my tenure here, is that there are things that, that take up those reserves pretty quickly, um, unforeseen things. So the idea of spending all of those funds to kind of maintain an operating budget doesn't last very long. Um, you can't do it. So as the town is setting its priorities, and, and we're here you folks and, and encourage you to talk to other people about this as well. As the town sets its priorities, um, it may require additional funding to take place over time. 
and although a project like this may be able to be handled through available funds, um, John and team are looking at an operating budget that as a result of costs we can't control, uh, salary increases, health care, uh, state aid, things like that, they're actually having a decrease in what they can spend in order to stay within the constraints that we have for town. Um, and at some point, and this committee has been having discussions through the last several financial forums, at some point the town needs to either decide that the priorities are as they are and it has to raise additional funds to, to pay for them, or vice versa, it comes back and it says, we're not going to pay for them, and then there'll have to be serious cuts in service, or continued serious cuts in service. Um, and we're at that level now. We're at that discussion right now. Um, we're certainly not saying that we need an override in April or something like that, but it may be that, again, if the town sets its priorities that it wants the services, we will need an operating override uh, soon. Uh, thinking kind of maybe next year kind of thing. So I don't know if you're really, that's a yeah, personal no, comment. But yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I have an additional comment. Um, I have a question I live on Deering Street. I have a son that will be either at Birchmead or Barrows next year. Um, and it's, it's an interesting question. It's, it's actually a, an interesting point to me that it, it, right now it might not cost taxpayers another dime, but in terms of um, the value that it gets, it, to me it seems important to keep in mind that right now we have nearly 300 parents a year, families a year, who are willing to put up $4,200 of their own money um, and, and take on that burden and um, the contribution to the school system because of the importance of public kindergarten. So in the, in the discourse around what the town's priorities are and the value of this, it just seems like it's an important thing to keep in mind that 300 people annually are putting up their own money to make this happen. Um, and just, I'll just leave it there. I'll do a little marketing. I love seeing the participation. I think it's great. Mm -hmm. I'll put it out there and further. As you know, town meeting slots are available right now. I encourage you <laughs> to, you know, run for town meeting. You need almost once a month. Get involved. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Big Palm has a slot available. We do. Right? Yes. So, yes. So, yeah. 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 so <laughs> I really applaud you being here and encourage more participation because that's the only way things get done. Thanks. Mm -hmm. And maybe just to, to close on that, and John was kind of talking about the process, and I mentioned it very briefly at the beginning. Um, we have a financial forum coming up next week, next Wednesday. We'd love to see you folks there to have other people attend as well. It's a forum in front of virtually all the boards of the town. Uh, and to talk about budgets, to talk about priorities. Um, and, and again, we're things are, are tight. There are a lot of things that we, we like to fund, uh, both town and schools, um, that within the budget as proposed at this point won't happen uh, to the point of actual cuts, not just not doing anything. So, you know, if have, those are priorities, I encourage you to attend the forum, talk to your selectmen, talk to the selectmen, talk to your town meeting members, and come to town meeting. You know, join town meeting even better. <laughs> come to it. Um, Linda Snowdocks are still. Um, just to <laughs> join the chorus, I want to make sure I know that sometimes there's this panic reaction when People say, so it's great, raise your voice, now commit all this time. <laughs> I just want to say that it doesn't necessarily take, the only way is not by joining the committee. It's also a huge help just to add your voice and your thoughts and your input to the meetings. When we had a recent town meeting and we had the gallery um, fill up with people that were committed to a certain issue, it made people, I think, in town meetings stop and think. And it added to the discussion because people could add their, their opinions and their concerns. And so even if you cannot volunteer on the FinCom or the school committee or um, the other committees, it's really important just to be there and get your friends there and to be a part of the discussion. It makes a big difference. So thank you guys. I'm, I'm not alive, but thank you guys. <laughs> Anything else on this, this subject? Awesome. Thank you guys very much for the presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Can we ask a, a question um, for next week? Is there other, and I know utility costs is something that we're going to have to get. Is there anything else from your perspective that you would want to know? 
I, and I believe you asked a couple of Yeah, I, I have yeah. the lease to not own, the cost yeah. to remove, selling versus salvage, foundation versus um, the pilings. Yeah, and foundation um, versus pilings more broadly is the notion of uh, more permanent permanence versus, versus mm -hmm. not permanent. Just, mm -hmm. just don't understand what the cost to is. add additional units or the feasibility of that. Okay. If we want to go even further than this. Okay. If we had this, yeah, the actual to land to do seven it. Seven or eight or okay. whatever the number is, if we could fit it. Okay. And, and I would add, too, we really appreciate you guys coming in today. Um, awesome. We're having a financial forum next week, and we certainly yeah. can cover this then. But I think it was valuable to yeah. kind of open it up beforehand and talk about it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Nice. So appreciate it. Sorry. Um, at the risk of being pushy, can I also make a plug for the Martin Luther King Day? <laughs> <laughs> we have a wonderful free event happening on Monday in town. It's um, we, we, the Human Relations Advisory Committee and the schools have collaborated in bringing Rob Surratt and town and school groups to this multi community event. It's free. There's light breakfast served at 9.30 and the presentation starts at 10 community and school groups will be presenting what they do to stand together to make a difference, standing together for justice. And so it will be wonderful the more people that come. Um, and four portraits are being donated by Eastern Bank, by the Reading Cultural Council, now by Coles as of today, and mm -hmm. also by Moynihan Lumber. Um, so they've invested in our town, and it's making a difference, and we love people to come and take advantage. It's free. Thank you. And, and just to, to close on it, so that was privately funded completely. It's completely privately funded. It's not a penny, and the grants will help pay for additional connected things as well as the celebration. Thank you all very much. You're all welcome to stay. Come on, come on, come on. Yeah, let's take a couple of minutes and stretch and stretch. Yeah, I just want to have a picture of the numbers that people have been born yet. Yeah, that's a challenge. Exactly. Anyone know? I don't know. I don't know. And you don't know it's because when you know what John said earlier, it's Remember, I was I haven't even thought it. There's two fractions when they started the Facebook page. Four and when they started the Facebook page. I can imagine there's one more more issue, right? The only other thing that I just thought of is that is the cost of that. Like if you did release it. Oh, yeah. I don't know. Is there a big cost that is it? Is it? I don't know. Is it? Is it? Yeah, well, that's such a stuff, such a right, you can't do it anyway. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, that's, uh, yeah. We could put a little walkway down to the tennis courts and go run around there, maybe. And what I learned today is that if the land is already deemed disturbed, meaning it's a lot easier to get through. That would be a question on the free fall. It's not free, it's taxpayer funded. Yeah, I was really never going to get me from the house. So yeah, 
It's a really full name. Thank you. Uh, you mean to be a leading term at best? Yeah. 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 To be good. Yes. Yes. Uh, what's been the reaction to your event? Is that is that message out there, or is it so natural? It's in our space group. I don't know. I don't know that it's part of the community. Yeah. Um, yeah. 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 Yeah.
and then the approving body for that uh, to approve the funds expenditure is, um, I believe, town accountant, moderator, moderator and chairman of income. Those are the three on the committee, and it takes a majority vote. So we can move it, but meeting. we can't spend it without the approval. Then. Right. Well, so in, in the prior okay. activities already on the on the books, um, it could happen with the moderator's approval. And it wasn't really clear about the whole notion of reserve funds, non reserve funds, but now the opinion is kind of in reserve funds aren't for scouting. We probably can allocate funds from that by a vote to vote. So, just, just to add a couple sentences, you may as well know um, the Attorney General is going to disapprove the February or the September article. How many times do you Because the current bylaw is not legal, which they approved. And the illegal part we did not change. So we had quite a, a difficult argument about it. So they're not approving You approved it. Um, and the part that was not legal is the current bylaw says you can spend money out of the reserve fund, which is clearly not legal. And we never would have done it that way, but we had to admit that's what the bylaw said. We always, that's why I had a lot of back and forth, said we always imagined transfer, doing a transfer like this into a line item. This happens to be going into the, your uh, audit line item since it's a similar activity. And then spending the money out of that line, which would be fine, but that's not what the bylaw said. And that's not what the new bylaw says. <laughs> so we may want to come back to town meeting at some point and clean up that bylaw. Um, the attorney the general. March town meeting, maybe. <laughs> 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 the attorney general approved it, but with some really very loud, cautious language. <laughs> Work with the town council and fix this mess, which I agree with. But it, it all worked out well. And to Mark's point, you already had the authority by the town meeting vote anyhow. But we were being a little careful not to you know, get anyone angry before they needed to be. If they've told us how to tweak it, doesn't like we should bring it to the yeah, I agree. spring town meeting get it done on the fourth. Yeah, I would already agree. So uh, why don't I make a motion to uh, let's see, do it appropriately to transfer funds in the amount of $35,000 from the FinCon Reserve Fund to the, I don't actually see it saying audit on this piece of paper. That's okay. You can just, you can say it. To the audit really, account. We really have to just cite the unforeseen or extraordinary expense line item. Right. Sorry. Yes. Uh, so let me read it specifically. It's respectfully requested the transfer in the amount of $35,000 be made from the Reserve funds in the account shown below, which is an unforeseen or extraordinary expense. Second. Discussion. All those in favor? Opposed? Yeah. 8 0. Approved. Um, I got a contract today. Um, we're debating who needs to sign it. I think I need to probably sign it. Got today, just late today, so yeah. just you know, right on top. But you know, obviously, I couldn't do it any time. Great. Okay. And then when that's set, then we'll go and Peter can actually issue the, the book, uh, the email. We got to be with tomorrow. So. Oh, great. <laughs> okay. Awesome. Awesome. All right. We'll go off the raisins. So, so we're all clear. We're we're not actually telling them to spend thirty-five thousand dollars. Right. We're doing phase one. They'll be reporting back. We'll review the results. The subcommittee will bring the full thin comment. We'll decide what the next step should be. Okay, thanks on that one. Do um, we have any other big business? One thing that came in a little late, I realized I was being rude, not including it. So. Um, what I handed out with a clip on it is the uh, town side of the budget. And I'll, let me just give you literally two minutes of the background. Okay, grab a little bit. There was enough, so it should be around somewhere. Somebody else, well, I'll catch you. Here. Oh, okay. Here. Oh, thank you. Right. 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 We got plenty back down in the office. Um, uh, last night was the first selectman's budget meeting. Next Tuesday will be the second. Uh, then we have a financial forum on Wednesday. And then, like the school committee, after that, we wrap up and finalize the budget. Unlike the school committee, this year I've done a different thing for a bunch of reasons, and I've not balanced the budget until the select and see all the presentations, especially from boards and committees. Um, in, in talking to some of them over the last couple months, two or three months, 
I really decided it was so sort of rude to present them the final budget before they really had a public chance to discuss it with the selectmen. Um, so we're making a change, and we might change, make this change permanent as far as I'm concerned, and maybe have the selectmen's meeting in December instead of January. It's, it's going to work out fine, but the budget that was handed out to you is absolutely not balanced. It is what was requested by department heads, including a lot of board and committee input. And it's about a million and thirty or forty thousand dollars out of balance. I have to cut a million dollars or so um, from that budget. But I thought it was only fair that you see, because it is being discussed in public. I didn't really mean to leave you out. I intended to show you the balanced version, and you still look at that. When do you think you'll have decided on the cuts to propose? Um, I will do that right after the second selectman meeting. I will include it in their weekend packet. They're meeting three weeks in a row, so the 27th, we'll have a discussion, uh, five of them and the one of me, and uh, kick around a couple of options as the final choices, but they will have my version of a balanced budget then, and some things may change. So the actual you know, balancing will have happened two or three weeks before you actually see a final product with words and explanations and all that. We haven't done that yet. Okay. Um, this is one of the tougher budgets we've had. In and I'll say that you're not going to hear a lot of we're slashing this or cutting this. It's just we've got to the point where some things we have not added, such as the two dispatchers, have to be done. Have to. There's just no choice. Um, and it's, it's sort of uncomfortable, to be honest with you. There's, there's so many have to do things. That, um, and I was saying to Mark just quickly, we saw a really nice presentation yesterday on demographics already. You know, I'll just summarize by thinking that by, by mentioning that it's great that you guys are having a two-year budget kind of process and look, but looking over the next 10 or 20 years is really eye-opening for what this community needs to start thinking about because some of it's going to take 10 or 20 years worth of planning as to how what, what do you want your community to look like, what are the things you want to achieve. And I'll just highlight one thing. You want to retain the 65 and older population of this town or not right now we're not doing the best job and that's one of the reasons you're seeing a lot of school children. Mm -hmm. I know that she's better than the school's Sally once had me figure out like per student, per elder, and it's a little bit less than per student. Yeah. Let me speak. Yeah. Well we probably should uh, spend some time thinking about annual town meeting and the presentation. Uh, you know, first of all, the two-year look, I think, is new, and then to even look further than that would be pretty exceptional and probably very appropriate because we're going to need to think about, you know, I am hearing still from people now in, in Rumble, so you have $10 million in reserves, what's going on? Well, you know, if this happens with the school, that's nine. Um, and, you know, something else is going to happen. You know, pretty soon it's going to be back down to right where we thought it. Um, so I've been wondering where our reserves was at too. Like in, in the last mm -hmm. we saw where it's certified or whatever. So I never know what the number is that we haven't spent. Actual really cash, tight. we're somewhere around seven or eight million. Mm -hmm. We have reserves. Uh, there's a total number. It's it's very healthy, certainly. There's no argument that. Yeah. And do we know yet what? Um, I don't know if we asked you this the last minute forum. What is the threshold by with our, which they're going to look at our bond rating and go that is not enough? Or is that a, you have to just dance that? That's an art. Yeah. Um, I, I think I forwarded you something yesterday from s &P. If, if not, I will. Um, they rank us, in, I think they have seven categories. We're ranked highest, but it possibly can be in six, which is great. The only thing they don't rank us in is, if you will, you need an override. You're spending free cash in your operating budget. We don't like to see that. Somehow you magically make it work every year, so you get the good scores in all the other areas, but that's just not a best practice. Mm -hmm. um, and, and they can't really complain because things always work out, and that's the position I'm always in, is trying to explain to you why. I don't know how it worked out again, it's just fine. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, and, and they look at also and say, well, you can't plan on that working out all the time. And I say, don't worry, it's fine. <laughs> um, we do need to keep doing it, though. <laughs> it's, it's a good discipline. We don't need to have the cash level we have in order to be a good community, but we need the same discipline. So you don't want to relax the discipline or change the way you're doing it. Just be ready, and things like this request tonight will come along 
and take a million here and there, and then you're okay. You, again, you don't have to run out to the community and say, hey, we need a million or two million dollar operating override, just, you know, or I should say debt exclusion. Yeah. Um, the other piece of information I got two mornings ago that's certainly informal is we likely will have to use some amount of free cash, 200000 or less, for state aid short. Um, we're likely to get the same kind of funding last year, which is 25 bucks a kid plus no change in local aid. I got that from a reasonably reliable source. And do you folks know about our health insurance results? I can't remember. No, we no. no. saw it on the minutes and okay. said we have them about now. We, we had them a month ago. I almost forgot them. Oh, my God. Uh, well, no. Yes. Yeah. Well, we haven't met. Um, we did an RFP, as you know. Um, the end result is good. The bids were a horrifying experience to see. We got an 8.2% renewal from Mile. Uh, so that's, we don't need to use any free cash in addition for that. We had budgeted eight, it's close enough. What was horrible is the cover bids were 17, 19, and 23, or something like that. But what do you, what's the cover bids? The second, third, and fourth bidders were miles beyond. Wow. And, and, you know, the simplest way I can, I can explain it, which is how our consultant explained it, which we've always known, is Mayas lose an 800, or million, 800 grand or million bucks a year on you. And when you say losing, you just mean you could be making more if they were charging you the going rate of all municipalities or all customers. They have reserves, they have income, they have ways to offset it, but we're being treated like a really, really good customer. And that's what the market showed with the other bids from people who don't know it's from all in the wall. So we don't, do we know why we're being treated so much? Probably me, I'm not really sure. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, they're just going to come on they, the next day. They, yeah, they typically it. use Reading as the model community because we have such good labor negotiation relationships. And our employees are extremely proactive whenever they offer, you know, here's a new health tip. We have, we're really good about programs. Um, we're a very responsive community. When other communities call and ask, we help. Yep. And we've been with them as long as pr pretty much anyone. I think we might be the longest, I'm not sure. And that's not, not, not always a good thing, but in this case, there is a better this But, you know, what if Maya goes away? What if they change the way they operate? That's another million bucks a year we would suddenly need to find at least. So that was the part that was really scary. Yeah, I have to sleep, but... I, I should have told you in December, I think. <laughs> yeah, sure, sure. Yeah. I sent something out. So um, state aid is now our, our big... And it's not order of magnitude. It's not too bad. And, and it's just, just frustrating, though. Just so you know, the GIC will be much higher than it's been in recent years, let's just say, for an increase. It's nothing official yet. Like the what? The, the, the GIC is much part of it. It's running into oh, some issues. Okay. Um, another another important thing, which again I can't remember if I shared it. I don't know my own name. Some days, um, the incoming governor two days ago uh, released was what works out to another three hundred thousand dollars to Reading for road repair work this year, and has said they intend to do it for next year. So the legislature had appropriated nine hundred thousand to Reading, and the governor, the prior governor, only uh, released six hundred thousand. Um, one of the reasons for those of you that were at the town meeting a week ago. Uh, when Camille asked the question of why are you cutting roads by 50, they gave an answer. I, I couldn't give her a full answer because I wasn't sure that's what was going to happen, but I had a pretty good idea. Uh, quite honestly, we could probably cut the road budget even more if we just got an extra 300000 So keep, keep that in mind. But we're still staff constrained to do anything with that? That's absolutely an issue. We're really out of the yeah, that, can we hire temporary people to get jobs done? Um, not hiring them permanently, yeah. but but I also think we hit sort of bandwidth in terms of people's patient uh, mm -hmm. patients. And killing jobs so many places in town. Yeah, yeah. Under yeah I think people want better roads, but they just don't want to live through the yeah. hassle of construction. I think it got to be sensitive. I don't know what percent well, of the road. They're going to be knocking down your neighbor's house. You don't have to lose your construction. It could be like town yeah. or a better road. It could be a permit mansion. Whatever. <laughs> when you see road paving, West Street aside, that's a big project. You know, it's, I don't know, 50-50, I'll say, whether it's the town staff doing it or we hired someone to do it. Um, bigger okay. jobs usually we hire. Mm -hmm. When it's really busy, we tend to hire more. Mm -hmm. And that's fine, but hiring someone is still a fair amount of work yeah, to keep track of. Them. Yeah, mm -hmm. okay. And, you know, stop throwing trash in the woods, stop yeah. bothering the neighbors, you know, yeah. whatever it is. Mm -hmm. um, so we really are at capacity from a staff standpoint on any 
moved out and uh, you know it's kind of a nice problem and West Street's a big part of it make no mistake that's nine or ten million bucks over a couple of years is being put into Reading it's infrastructure which is really nice so those are the only financial updates uh, that I'm aware of and our property values are growing fast enough that we're right of the chapter 7 again. Yeah, that's yeah, very was, uh, interesting. I had not heard that. No, I have heard that a month or so. Ouch. Again, I'm sorry. I didn't know. Yeah, same time you heard the health I knew that, I, I I knew that chapter news. 70 was related <laughs> to you know, community wealth calculations, but I didn't know that full day kindergarten yeah, reimbursement exactly. was. I, I, I didn't know yeah. that. Yeah, so that, that changes the landscape. Yeah. Yeah, I think that will change it significantly to a you know, pretty good portion of the community has been focused on that. Well, it makes the override discussion that much easier. As you know, you have the ability to pay. The state says that. <laughs> 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 right, right. No, what do you think of that? That's quite a campaign. All right, uh, a couple more items. One, um, so we are, we're eight, and we're supposed to be nine. And we're recruiting, you've probably seen it in the newspaper, um, yeah. two weeks in a row, which is really nice. So um, we're asking people to apply to the town clerk by the 20th. Okay. If you know anybody that you think would be an asset for the group. Have we gotten it? Please. In the, in yes. the packets. In the back. Oh, oh, yeah. oh yeah. Okay. They, These look awesome. like the previous ones, based on um, the dates. Some of the previous ones are still interested. I know there's at least one new one. Great. Great. Absolutely want that. Yeah. Definitely have right. no choice. If they're in here, we ask them if they were still interested. In this oh, they're in. Yes. Great. Okay, that's awesome. So the, the FinCom appointment committee is going to meet on January 26th. And hopefully we'll have a bunch of candidates. It'll be nice to be at full full group um, as of that day, just in time for all the budget stuff, so that would be pretty awesome. Yeah. So I'm hoping that will happen. Uh, next, calendar. Just to make sure everybody has on their calendars, March, uh, Wednesdays of March are when we're going through all the budgets of all the different groups. So 4, 11, 18, and 25. And I think you also have the February date in there. Okay. So that's what I was wondering. Is Feb 25th? I think so. Uh, it wasn't on that sheet. Oh, okay, yeah, I guess I left it open to see how many how many meetings you think you need. Because we've been sort of four or five is usually the answer. Two for town, one for schools, and then miscellaneous. Right. Yeah, Including the vote. Yeah. And, and part of that depends on what the annual town warrant war looks like in terms of financial articles. And this, this one looks a little heavy. Uh, not the things we need, traditional things. Not anything complex, yeah, but can we hit them in February, you think? Or is that too early? Was the I lost track which town meeting. That would be the yeah, it's, April. it's a little too early. <laughs> uh, the second don't really close the warrant until February 24th, so it wouldn't be appropriate to do it before then, honestly. I can certainly give you an outline of it any time you like. Well, there is the 25th is actually a Wednesday, I think. Yeah, I, I don't know if I'd be comfortable giving you final numbers. We like to wait for snow and ice, for instance. Yeah. yeah. And if we do it in February, you can be sure March will snow a lot. Just on this plate. I, I'm certainly happy at any point, including next week, to just give you a draft outline of so you can see what kind of articles are in there. It's, you know, revolving funds. And uh, I'm going to probably ask you to uh, uh, have town meeting appropriate the additional 300000 of Chapter 90 money, just in case. That's kind of an accounting mm -hmm. question. And there's lots of sort of miscellaneous things. Putting money into OPEB. Um, you know, it goes on that discussion, yeah. Um, so conceivably, we have town meeting. If town meeting happens in February, it'd be the 23rd. Yes. It's like to close the warrant for April on the 24th. So we can conceivably meet the 20th to 25th. Yeah, yeah, I had a pencil here for that on my calendar just in case. And the potential special town meeting would just be one. Yes, uh, I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> what time is that? That'll be 7.30 here on the 25th. Okay. All right, so let's plug that one in. That's February? Yes, February 25. Is it at all helpful for me to hand you out a draft warrant for the annual next week? I have it. It's going to start. 
have a February one. I don't have the March one done yet. What was that meeting? Oh, uh, uh, yeah. We actually have two petitioned articles what for uh, uh, annual so town meeting, and one of them is extremely financial. Wow. Cemetery garage, two million dollars oh, yeah, for the cemetery trustees. Go so grab this. I that yesterday or today. Sorry. Okay, so we're going to be meeting those five weeks in a row. They're 25, March 4, 11, 18, and 25. Okay. Um, what do you want to do? Do you want to try to move things up a week? In other words, start to have more room at the end of the process? I'll do that. Yeah, I think if we can. I have a feeling that we may have more public input um, this year, more public participation. Yeah, the schools generally like to go towards the end. Yeah, I think they've but locked in. The 18th. Yeah, and if you're going to add a meeting, they really should go on the 11th because you're going to want two meetings at the end, I think. So they're, they have to have to ask you a little if they're available. The other possibility, it goes back many years, but FinCom used to meet twice a week during budget season. And by the way, town meeting used to meet for 20 to 25 sessions. Yeah, they do the annual budget only. Yes. I'm hoping it doesn't take that. <laughs> I hope so too. I'll check with you on that tomorrow. Um, on the minutes, I actually um, had a number of comments that I was going to make. So my suggestion is, um, if you guys don't mind, I, I would make them send them off to Caitlin, and then at our next meeting, we'll go through them again. The only I, I'm happy to share what they are. The problem is some of them are kind of lengthy, and it might be What's more efficient. We're meeting next week. Oh, sure, we're at the forum. Yeah, we'll be just at the forum. Yeah, I'll, I'll make these legible somehow. Sure. May take a little bit. <laughs> okay. Any other? Oh, actually, you know what? It's, um, I think my only comments are on the 1029. Yeah, those are my only comments. Do you want to take a look at the 12-8? Maybe we could do that one then. Opposite reaction. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm looking at me go, oh, maybe I was supposed to. Look at that. Oh, and by the way, I should give you an update uh, for those of you that didn't go to town meeting. All the things related to FinCom, the charter passed as you wished, as proposed. Mm -hmm.
Um, just something for you to think about, which is something Mark said. Uh, I, I really welcome your input on how to present the budget at town meeting. I'll, you know, we'll present it to you. We'll just have a discussion like we always do. But you know, one thing that definitely sort of dies on the cutting room floor is all the things we're not doing. No matter how many pages we put into the warrant report, and last year was three to five, we don't really want to bother the town meeting with all the whining about these are the things we're not doing. Um, but if you really want to get that message delivered a little more effectively, my suggestion is the department heads ought to stand up and say something. You know, police chief, fire chief, mm -hmm. whatever. Here's the things you're not getting. Mm -hmm. Here's the things I'm concerned about. It's not something we've ever done, to my knowledge in Reading. But those are the experts. You know, they can explain in a much more personal way than I can um, what's not happening, if, if you want to go that route. So that's something to think about. It's not something we've ever done, and it's it's not my first inclination, but if you feel that that message is not being effectively delivered, you can certainly do a better job. I'm a little concerned about that, and that is that the mission is not to kind of set the stage for everyone to come up and say what's not happening. Right. Kind of, oh, I'm, I can't do this, bummer. <laughs> um, we need to have some priorities, and, and you know, obviously in the cutting you're doing that, but maybe we need to understand of the cuts, what's, what's the one that <clears throat> hurt? That really hurt a lot of dispatchers last time, mm -hmm. uh, which is time you know you said, hey, no, can't can't not do it anymore. You have to do it. Can't afford it, but can't not do it. Yeah, well, you know, there's some things like that. And you know, public safety can be one. Not having uh, classrooms for kids, I think, certainly can be one. Yeah. Um, Maybe if it's explained and presented as, hey, this isn't the list of everything we can't do, but mm -hmm. by department, this is the one. This is the one or two that hurt the most. You know, and if we could hear from those people, I think what would be helpful too is, you know, if we had you know, a a one page in something we've done in the past, but if we had a one page, you know, a slide that said, you know, then separate from that, these are the top five, the top whatever we determine they are. It'd be nice to have one slide that throughout the year we can continue to. Every time we go to talk, just remember, remember the slide. Remember this, just along the same lines of long-term planning and thinking about some of the issues we ran into when we first started talking about school space and we got a portion of the population that said we just did the library now we've got this we you know I think that's part of the you know our duty to kind of remind people hey, it's not only what we're spending money on it's what we're not spending money on the, Either you're going to tell us you want, or you're going to realize we need, or maybe you realize that's the prudent thing to do, and we need to consider it, and that would be nice. But we're doing the right thing by moving on. But it's it's full disclosure. If you're ever going to try to build towards an override, people yeah, need that. to know that information. Yeah, yeah, I think no, I think that's exactly right. And I think that what we need to figure out, I think, is how to present to people. Um, and I think the selectmen need to weigh in on this, obviously, the will too. But if the town has certain priorities and certain levels of services that they're demanding, there's a cost. And right now, we don't tell them that cost. We tell them, mm -hmm. here's, here's what we think makes sense, and that's what we recommend to town meeting. Um, at some point, it's got to be, all right, if you want all these services, here is what it's going to cost. And then the next question is, how are you going to fund it? And then we have to be able to talk about it. Because it does roll into the override. Oh, yeah. If we ultimately say, okay, now we need an override, well, the follow up is, Why? okay, how much is the override and what is that going to get me? Because we can talk about overrides all, you know, we can talk about it all day, but you're never going to get anyone to agree on it until you tell them what they're getting for their yeah, additional. Something really specific, I think. Right. Yeah, well, I'd ask you to look at last year's town meeting budget, and I can get you copies or show where it is online. This is really spelled out black and white, but I know Mark on a couple occasions um, has said we, we need to do a better job communicating that, and I'm all ears. I, I'm very interested in doing it. But look at what we've done. If that's not the way to do it, we need suggestions. Because we've done this, the one-page summary, mm -hmm. we've done the several-page description. Yeah, I, yeah. I do. I, I do like how we do more of an overview than a memory of your past with the sort of outline. I did have it in context in my mind. I like, but I think we definitely have to come up with. Oh, by the way, these were the other needs. Because when you just present, this is what's in the budget, everyone goes away thinking, oh, good, everyone's yeah. happy. 
Yeah, part of that is John and I, uh, as you heard my guest talk recently, um, we're not exactly sure where this two-year look comes into play. Is it the March FinCom? Is it town meeting? I don't think any of us know because we need to just talk about it. That's something you could probably talk about next week, though. You know, you know how formal do you want the second year? Because you know, and I'm, you're going to find it surprising. I know the school's second year situation better than our own because of the offsets they're using in the first year. I know their second year is tough. Yeah, no, it's. Um, I've attended a few meetings. You know, as much as they're they're bummed out about year one, yeah. they're petrified of year two. Exactly. I think the other thing we may want to do as as a FinCom is educate people about overrides. We hate to say it. That's what I've been doing. Every one of those emails that came in about the school space project, okay. I'm like, I ended the email with, oh, and by the way, here's we need an override. Yeah, here's well, I'm why. Thinking a more detail. <laughs> <laughs> No, but I, I think it's great that the leadership of the town is all on board, the selectmen. I wouldn't say everybody's like loving it or all on board, but the more we say it, it become, it'll become reality. Mm -hmm. And we have to, this is the perfect time. Yeah, I think at, at minimum it needs to be considered. I, I'm, I'm not sure everybody is on board. Maybe a little bit better oh, I know. that than I am. Yeah. But I don't see anybody oh, from the committee no. to get it. it yeah, vote. no, I like that the point point officials <laughs> pretty solid, but no, I could give you a whole list of people. Right, right. Yes. So it may be that, that you know, FinCom is the right group to, to take the lead a little bit in mm -hmm. terms of presenting options. Um, not what the priorities are, but mm -hmm. if these are the priorities, mm -hmm. here, here are the options in terms of how to pay for it. Mm -hmm. um, and it'd be great, actually, maybe to take some of the demographics you were talking about yeah. in that part of that presentation to talk about, wow, well, you know, the Chapter 70 thing is kind of, I'm still kind of, really? yeah. Yeah, oh, it's pretty clear. We're not even close. So how many communities are falling in the same bucket that we're in now? Is it like 50-50? I, I never heard of that. So I didn't to think be really an very general, and I do mean general, um, cities qualify, towns not so much. Oh, so like that. But, but we've been counting on it. Yeah, yeah. that was yeah, part of It was a huge part of the process. Yes, yep. And, and this did come out a while ago. You know, I, I appreciate that you have to met, but we need to talk more at dinner. <laughs> <laughs> I know you've said you put the wall up, and I now fully believe you. <laughs> I had to text someone as to where this meeting was. Tonight. Yeah, I did think about it. No. Um, it was certainly a surprise to many of us, because you're right, it was here's the deal, and then here's not the deal. It's nobody's fault. It's just here's the facts. Yeah, yeah. I'm not sure everybody appreciated immediately what the impact of that is. Um, but I think we do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Um, so let's maybe do a little bit of thinking, everybody, if we could, on number one, kind of the two-year look and how we would mm -hmm. express it and what that means in terms of people starting to prepare what next yeah. year would look like, and etc. Um, I think we. Somewhere between being lucky and good on the 8% assumption and not building 14% into the budget, which would have been devastating, truthfully. So I think that's a good call. Mm -hmm. uh, and we should think about this notion of key projects, and the money that would be required to fund them, and the whole notion of um, how you, if you have higher operating costs, what are your options and how do you deal with it? Mm -hmm. you know, override is, is one of them. Cutting services is another. I'm thinking Mark should get up at town meeting. What do you think? Mm. <laughs> you should have March town meeting just to explain. <laughs> yeah, let's what does the town do when we run into financial crisis? Well, here you go. We have our slides. Yeah, I don't think it's quite a history of overruns. I do want to think discussion. about how we want to approach the recommended level of reserves and free cash and do some research to see if we recommend the higher level of reserves. Frankly, or lower. Uh, well, you're at, no, I'm going to say 10 high. or 11 now, I can't remember exactly. Um, to answer your question earlier, it's, it's a, it is an art, but, you know, 8 is, a, eight is good. 7 is kind of the same as 8. Below 7 is not. That's our, the way they look at it. Our actual policy is, is 5. five. But Which is that, probably on the low side. Yeah, and, but that excludes some of the uh, other reserve funds. Stabilization fund, I think. 
that big. That's a million. But the fact you have a policy, right. don't don't misunderstand this. It is a plus, absolutely. Right. As is your debt and capital policy in the uh, rating agency's eyes. But to, to me, I'm coming across, I'm coming at it twofold. Number one is it probably <coughs> should be a higher than 5% if we want to maintain that bond rating. We've got that bond rating, not because we've got 5%, but because we've got higher. <coughs> The way we're borrowing tomorrow, so be careful what you say. <laughs> you might so, yeah. um, and then also, if we raise that in terms of that perception that we <coughs> got extra beyond our policy out there, right. minimizes that gap. Mm -hmm. Being partial of that is we define reserves so that everyone it has this notion that it's free cash and that's the magic number. Right? We should, you know, if we decide to allocate funds for certain things that in fact our reserve funds, that should be part of our discussion too. So maybe you don't have to have free cash of, of six, maybe five of that, and two of stabilization funds. Isn't that yeah, the same thing? Yeah, right. I, th I still think it's just one number. Yeah, I think yeah. you keep it simple. So right. I think that, is it like one point something million dollars in stabilization? Yes. Yeah. One point two, one point four, something like that. So it's not insubstantial. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's the point. And, and yeah. clarification, one, why do we have point. to have a stabilization fund and a cash reserves fund? Why can't we just have one look at it? Is There's no reason. You can do whatever you want. Although, oh. doesn't that, isn't it one, two, one's majority, one's two thirds? Well, well, yeah, there's differences. I don't mean to yeah, say yeah. it's not there. Yeah, there are reasons why we go different ways. You know, the other thing we talked about briefly sometime in the summer, I think, is you can move some larger amount into a different fund and then just not talk about it. It's not free cash. It's in a stabilization fund, or a capital reserve fund, mm -hmm. or in a rainy day fund. Mm -hmm. Call it whatever you want. Mm -hmm. And that's put away. It's, it's not something to be discussed every year. Mm -hmm. It's a little bit of what we did last year. Yeah, a little bit of stuff got tucked into oh, the stabilization no. general fund, I think. But, uh, no. no. But it was, a, it was a stabilization fund specific to certain types of activities and not others. Mm -hmm. And that, that's where I think we get into trouble, is if we start allocating it to some things and then we need it, but oh no, it's, it's or something else you can't do that. Well, if you had a capital reserves fund, tonight's discussion is over. Yeah, there's easy capital Here reserves. we go. Right. And we have three million bucks just for this purpose, whatever it is. So those other options, and quite honestly, to me, most of it's marketing, not finance. So I'm not Agreed. Really all that interested. But right. there are other ways. You still charge us. <laughs> so I think that's a good. Uh, Discussion for you know, for February. But yeah. if you do want to set up a fund, we need to know that by February 24th at annual oh. meeting, just to be clear. And I can oh, to get on the line. Yeah, I can do some research. Perhaps we talk about that as well. <clears throat> right. So maybe February we make sure we have all the funds amounts. And Again, so on, I, so I will bring you yeah. an outline of annual town meeting, and we'll see all the different revolving funds we have at least, and all the other financial articles, so you'll sort of have a sense of what's going on. Um, and I'll have the town account right up a memo on sort of reserves generally, so you understand kind of what the different options are. You're right, it is different amount of votes, different amount of possibilities, depending on how you put the money in, you can only spend it on three things or whatever. We have a sale of real estate fund that's the most narrow you know, it has three uses, I think. I can't remember. Pension, capital, and something else. So we've almost used it up, other than the two single family lots we sold in the last couple of years, so the 600, 700 grand that's just sitting there with no plan. Oh, does that have, that looks like some modulars then? Well, absolutely. <laughs> it looks very much. Uh, it's, to my mind, it it's we spent on real estate. We sold real okay. estate. Okay. We may need to buy real estate, so it is absolutely eligible for that. Mm -hmm. Is there any activity going on with the Oakland Road property at this point in terms of real estate? Crescent Street, Crescent Street High School. Don't know. I've, I've asked for the uh, Geotech survey. I haven't seen it yet, so I, I, I'm not even know. I'm not even aware. Certainly, there's no developer asking. Yeah. Who owns it today? The town or the schools? That's Bilbrin. <laughs> the town. The town. That's Ask okay. us. <laughs> the town. If we vote at Temple, we can make it totally clear. We did. There was like yes, I indeed. I forget which direction we went. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was, well, they rearranged a lot of what was down there, so that's why yeah. it's a little complicated. But the town is meant to own it, and I believe we do. 
Okay, just to take one more minute, guys. Sorry for folks who didn't go through, kind of go through a budget process before, and even those who have. <laughs> um, so what's going on now is based on the guidance that we gave to the, the town and to the schools. They prepared budgets, so the schools actually already presented theirs. Um, so the school department presented to the school committee. They're going through it piece by piece. The school committee then has to approve it. And then that's the budget that they'll come present to FinCom. And then, uh, then it goes back into the committee and it's all presented as one budget by Bob, both the town and the schools as one. Well. And Bob just mentioned what he's done on his budget to date is kind of a starting point, then it'll get balanced. Um, then all the different groups come see us. That's why we're meeting in March every week. So we'll have schedules and the department heads will come in and talk about, uh, first of all, there'll be a, a a brief presentation or a paragraph summarizing what's going on, any significant changes. And then the department heads will be here to answer any questions that we have. So ideally, um, if we have read that stuff beforehand, it just makes the meetings go a whole lot smoother. Mm -hmm. We have a pretty good idea of what's going on, the questions we want to ask. And that would be great just to, to go through it that way. Um, same thing will happen on the schools. Um, I would encourage all of us, if you can get to the selectmen's meeting, uh, school committee meeting, whatever, right around now, these are the ones um, if you have particular questions, you know, it's a great time to ask them. We can certainly ask them when, when the folks are here, but you know, where we can do in advance is great. Then, uh, once all that's done, we have some miscellaneous items, and then we vote on uh, the recommended budget and bring up any issues that we have that, that we want to do with the recommended budget. Then we will be presenting that to town meeting um, as FinCom actually presents the budget. It is FinCom's budget, right, as, as you vote. So uh, we present, we go through it, and there's no town meeting goes through and discusses it, kind of article by article, kind of the way that we did the, uh, the, the charter, change, charter change stuff. And it's piece by piece by piece by piece, and then it's on as one thing at the end. So that's the process. Uh, this is right in the midst of it. We can get a minute number. Mm -hmm. It'd be perfect timing. So, and, and some of the folks are on there, I don't know if you had a chance to look through it. But there's some folks who have some really uh, interesting backgrounds that could be you know, bringing up another perspective that would be great. Yeah. Last call on items. All good. So financial forum, 7:30 Senior Center. Next one. Yeah. Good. Right. You have a motion. Motion to adjourn. Second. Okay. All those in favor? Please do adjourn. All those in favor? Thank you guys very much.
Is it uh, like twelve dollars or something? Well, it's, it's point half a percent or a quarter. Or no, it's point point five. No, it's five and a quarter to five point two, right? Oh, that all. Okay, so that a quarter five point five. Yeah, yeah. point five percent. Yeah. yeah. Right. I'll, I'll spend that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> But you get I a mean, going from the gas, but uh, yeah. Well, th that's a good point too. <laughs> yeah, that's, a that's actually something that we probably should bring out at the budget meeting. 